just want to say welcome everybody. We got a really special guest. We got the band Hollis Doran and Josh Henry coming through on the way to Nashville, nominated for like four of their songs. And I got them to stop by and we got to hear a couple of their songs live. I got to interview them. Super, super cool podcast right here. You're going to hear their story, some of their struggles with the band, some of their how the band came to be, and a lot more. Hang out because this is a live version of their testimony. And thank you so much for going on. And I just want to say thank you all my Patreons over there, guys. I love you so much. Thank you for your support and continuing to doing what you do. Enjoy. Hey, folks, this is Hollis Dorian, and you're listening to the Process Podcast Show. It's the way the guitar's made, okay? Josh, Holla, man, welcome. Thank you, dude. I appreciate y'all coming out tonight, man, today, and hanging out on your way through, man. And y'all guys got a lot of cool stuff going, man. I respect y'all so much, and the determination, the music, the unity that you put together, and just really, really cool, and your heart for music. And I literally like to take a second, just like, Tell me about y'all's story, about y'all's band, man, about like your passion for music. I mean, I know Josh, you know, he's an outlaw drums artist me. and has been for a little while. And, um, but we really want to kind of dive in and kind of look a little bit more about the band and kind of, um, yeah, what's been going on, man? Yeah, no, it, uh, you know, I started writing songs about 10 years ago and, um, you know, it was the kind of thing where, I didn't. I didn't want to put music out. That didn't mean anything to me. I didn't want to put country songs out because I love country music and you know it means something to me. And I was like, I'm not going to do it unless I feel like I have something authentic to say. Yeah. And so one of the one of the first songs that I uh, co-wrote with one of my buddies, Wes Prodish, was "Country by Birthright." And it came along because he kept saying, you know, I grew up on a farm with cattle and hogs and chickens everything else and he said oh it'd be funny to see you know little hollis wearing a cowboy hat and boots and i said cowboy hat that that was for rich people we, we couldn't afford that <laughs> he's like well you had a tractor at least i go no we did everything by hand <laughs> and he goes well there's your song bubba <laughs> and so that became literally the lyrics to the song and i i realized at that moment that i was like oh i do have something authentically me to say in a musical form and so we recorded those initial batch of songs and then from that um, some of the session players that were on that record turned out to be later on part of this band and um, you know most of these guys were in a band called Dead Show Dealers whose lead singer unfortunately passed away unexpectedly and um, after that, you know, I, I felt kind of awkward approaching them after that, but they were open to it. And, um, you know, we've kind of melded the sounds together from that. And so I feel like, you know, from a tragic event, something really positive has come out of it, yeah. you know. And um, if that's not country music, I don't know what the hell is, right. you know. <laughs> yeah, so for me, that's that's what it came down to. But. You never know with musicians like you're gonna you're gonna gel with them and find a rhythm and it was so easy with these guys they understood what i was asking for and i understood where they were coming from it's so putting it all together like i said some of these songs that i thought were little songs turned into these like anthem like songs once they're recorded bigger than i thought they could be like the one we was just listening yeah. to yeah and i couldn't and i i couldn't imagine that song being big that, I'm gonna say, it, it really felt good for me it was a little personal thing uh -huh. but it but the the recording got bigger and bigger and i was like wow that's a that's a, like an almost an anthem at that point yeah but some of them are like that and some of them are are stripped down uh you know trying to give a balance to uh, all of it some up tempo, some some low, 
you know, so obviously some serious subjects, but I'm like, well, what else is there? You know, there's yeah. living and dying, and we're gonna write songs about it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. being able to put that spark and y'all's y'all's flair on it is really important, I feel like, too. Yeah. So so tell me about some of y'all's y'all's band, like that some of y'all struggle. Because I'm going to tell you, a band, people don't realize how much a band does have to do a lot of the stuff, and they do struggle, and they do have to have a heart for it. And it is very difficult to get songs finished up. And having the mic, right clarity in your mind to even finish the stuff, I mean, people don't really realize that because if you're not... You know, sometimes it's hard to write songs, and you almost kind of have to outline the song that you're feeling, you know, how you're feeling. That's why it's almost kind of easy to kind of write a song, in a sense, and it ain't easy, but how you're feeling, like your emotions. But to but, polish it. But finishing it and polishing yep. it, that's yeah. where the work comes in. Because now you're not necessarily in that place where right. it was right, and then you may have to go back and make changes to it. Well, like you know, for, for years when I started writing them, it's, you know, it's me and a guitar or a keyboard. And I've got something that I hear in my head, and I'm like, I'm not a good enough musician to make that. Yeah. But then when you start working with other musicians, you realize they start playing something you never could have imagined. And you go, that's that's 10 times better than what I had in my head, you know? <laughs> so the evolution of it is it's cool to me. Welcome to the process. Even podcast, something like show, Tombstone, everybody. where it was We've just a, a really little cool personal acoustic that. thing, We've which would have been totally fine with me. But once it started layering more. things in, I'm like, getting goosebumps hearing the, the song bigger, you yeah. know? So for me, the collaboration part is super cool after all those years of just writing on my own with, with the lyricist uh, to see that kind of input. Even on the first record, there's a song called uh, Extraordinary Baby. And it's kind of a, you know, a pop country song. And so uh, when I turned it over to the sound engineer and the, and the guitar player on, on that record, they took it away and started doing their their work on it. They were the surgeons. Yeah, and I come back in and there's this little guitar on there that sounds almost like Def Leppard, believe it or not. And I went, well, that sounds bad. <laughs> like, That's cool. And then what blew my mind was on one of the songs, I come in and there's harmonica. And I never thought about having harmonica on the song whatsoever. But once people heard that version with the harmonica they go no it sounds like it's always been there had to be in there yeah. you know so it's little things like that where i go the the collaboration part of it is it's fun it's a lot of work but it's rewarding in the end when you have multiple individuals that cre creatively gel yeah. uh, and that's just for for me anyway that's super rewarding to hear the fruits of that labor yeah, yeah. and the flip side of that is to make that story even more crazy, <laughs> the guy who put the harmonica on the record was Robert Wilson, the lead singer from Dead Show that passed away. That is absolutely a true story. You know, it's a oh my god, yeah, it's a small Living world. Who, who, who yeah. knew? You know, That's small crazy. world kind of thing. They yeah. they said here, they go, we know a guy who does yeah. harmonica, right? Now I don't know the guy. I don't I don't know Josh mm -hmm. at this point. I don't I don't know anybody. They said we know a guy, and I listened to the harmonica. It was one take through the whole song. Now they put it up and down in the mix, but it was one take through the whole song and they never told me the guy's name. And so I get to a point where I was like, what if I, you know, the guy did this amazing harmonica bit for this song, like I want to, yeah, I want to thank the guy, at least they give me his name. And I contacted him on uh, uh, Instagram, I DM and I said, hey brother, you know, this, this is amazing. I want to thank you, I was overdue. He said, yeah, I'm glad you like it. and. Um, Two weeks later, he passed away. Completely crazy, but I had no idea the connection. So when Stone, the bass player, says, "Oh, I got the drummer," and I got, and I realize, wait a minute, the guy who did the harmonica on the song was your lead singer. I had no idea. And so I feel like, in some ways, it's like there's almost like a, a, a little, little bit of that guy who I never met in person. You know, like. Uh, eternalized on that song you know but I was very grateful for him doing it and so I feel like I feel lucky to have a little piece of that person right forever yeah. on one yeah. of my songs yeah you know? yeah crazy that crazy means. the way you know that worked so y'all y'all so how long how long have y'all been together like as a group about two years right yeah it's coming up to it yeah coming I don't up. think it's not it's not quite two years but it's close yeah. enough to call it two years yeah and how many, about round about like, how many songs y'all got? 
Well, there's 10 songs released commercially. I mean, that's the thing. I've, I've been writing it so long, I've, I've got albums worth of material. Yeah. But as we were saying, there's, you know, it takes a long time to develop them and, and record them the right way. Um, you know, and everybody's got day jobs, et cetera, and it's, it's, it's not easy. But yeah. that's the thing is I found that the, the commitment level to trying to create uh, that kind of quality um, is really admirable, honestly, because I never, you know, sitting there writing songs by yourself, you don't think other people are going to go, oh, I want in on that, or I want to spend my creative time, my free time. You know, that to me, that's the most precious thing you have is your time. Yeah, it is. So the fact that there's people who uh, want to be involved in yeah. these songs was amazing to me. Yeah. But it's, a, you know, then on the other side of it, it's like, you know, I ended up with three musical brothers that I didn't have before. And that's pretty cool, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, there, there's three human beings that can, they're the only ones who can do this. Yeah. You know, and that's a special thing for me. Yeah, and y'all connect and you can do, almost kind of, you know each other. It's almost like a language. Like when y'all start playing, yeah. you gotta look, you can tell yeah. exactly yeah. what's gonna go on. Yeah. And it's like a, you're in sync. You know, that's what I, that's what I kind of like to think of. Well, they all look at me when I've screwed up. <laughs> yes, <laughs> waiting for me to get back in. <laughs> To show them where the one is while I'm playing. <laughs> and I'm back in. Okay, we're good. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not the only one about that. Cause, uh, <laughs> yeah. So what's been y'all's most struggles like as a, as a band, man? Like, you always think of maybe practicing or finding your time and to rehearse or just uh, y'all doing your like, remote practicing or is everybody y'all just getting to get together in a space and practice? It's everybody in the same space. Uh, it's, it's sometimes a struggle because everybody's got schedules. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, I think the main I think the main struggle would be like finding live venues. You know yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's, There's it's, not a whole lot for country music here. Well, here. Shit, I forgot where I was. There's not a whole lot of music venues for country in Florida. Yeah. Like it's it's a, a sought after thing, so we find ourselves clipping onto like festivals. Yeah. Like, yeah. all right, we'll play that festival. All right, we'll play that festival. You can't just go to a venue and be like, hey, we've got you know two other bands let's do this and they're like no we're good you guys aren't rock and roll you're not rap you're not pop music no we're yeah. good we'll and we're not we're not a, a you know four hour set jukebox yeah you know kind of band it's all original music, all original music you know so yeah. um that's a that's a tough sell in a lot of it venues is. where they're just you know i mean don't get me wrong i love hearing and playing some 90s country music yeah. but it's it's just not the thing that we do yeah you know, so that that part is the is the struggle. For yeah, me. yeah. That's you almost see a lot of people doing that. That's kind of what they do for their gig is they just they just play a, a um, cover songs. Yeah. That's they're a cover band. A yeah. bunch of covers, and they throw their two or three originals. Two or three originals. Yeah. You know, trying to hide them. Oh. Yeah. You go. Where, 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 you yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, you like that one? Yeah. Oh, check this out. Yeah. And and it, it's almost kind of like you got to almost kind of lure them into it so yeah. because it's, it is hard for people to get to and i respect y'all because i mean doing this right here is very difficult people don't realize how how much time it really takes and dedication it takes yeah. to this craft to get it dialed in to get your stuff together even just to get together for practice and i mean i'm just been, i'm playing with mar we've been put, playing here at the halloween party next weekend this weekend and we're trying to get together and practice and just the couple times that we have practiced seems like it was such a hassle trying to get together and it's yeah. just like i mean right. hurting cats it is it's yeah. just like i would almost just rather not even practice we're going to just do that and just kind of wing it that's and it <laughs> practice on your own time and let's come in and wing it yeah and you know the band sometimes wants to like not practice and just like consider us getting together as their practice and i'm like no you gotta like listen to your stuff listen to your yeah. songs and Especially like the bass players and the guitar players, man, because drums, you know, you can kind of put the beat in there. You don't have to have be on the note, per se, as much as like a bass player would have to be, you know, where you can kind of get in there. So we kind of, you know, I hate practicing. I just like, let me just, just play something. And, just jam, man. <laughs> and, you know, if it gets bad, I'll just, if I don't know how to play it, I'll play a lot lower. You know, I'll just stay lower to event. Eventually I'll be quiet if that's the case. But for the most part, man. Um, I just love playing music and love the community with it and all, the, all that that kind of goes with it, man. It's a big community, but it's small. Yeah. And the ones that are like making it, it's just like there's a, there's a fine line. The ones that just busted through, they really, really make it. But the ones that don't, it's just, 
it's hard. It's yeah. hard. And have to have other jobs and day jobs and doing stuff that you don't want to do to keep doing this. Like you know? I always and, said, if I did this for my money, I'd have been out years ago. Oh God. <laughs> That's the same years thing ago. with the drums, man. I, I can make too much more money doing other stuff. Yeah. There's a passion you, yeah, and love, that love. For that. Yep. To be able to just create something to make a musical note, man. It's yep. just really cool, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah. So what do y'all do? Y'all have any kind? Y'all y'all pretty much are like cast as country or country rock or just country you think? I always say country. I mean, it's that kind of sounded like rock, country rock. It's country. Well, country. Yeah. essentially, he's country, and I'm that's rock, the thing. Yeah. So that's why it's country rock. It's like, okay. No matter what I play, I'm like, damn, I didn't mean to hit that hard. <laughs> damn, I didn't mean to do that fill. So I, I think that's where the rock comes in. No, it's definitely evolved. bring the dynamic. To yeah. it. I, mean, I love getting other kind of genres together. <laughs> incorporating them into a space because it, it, yeah. it brings out different variety to make something very original you right. know yeah that's what i mean even people said that, well the second record sounds different than the first one i'm like right it was different yeah, different, different group musicians. of people yeah. different musicians i'm like it's it's a, i was like whatever the sound is that gels from these these four people like that's the sound yeah. you know uh when it's a song that i think should be this kind of song but then they've got something else that's just as good i'm like why not yeah you know this, this i still love the song but uh you know the sound is going to be different but yeah somebody had noted like oh the second record is darker and i said well some of that was by design too because uh this i was telling josh like even a song like tombstone you know i'm sitting there watching uh yellowstone and i go yeah i wonder if i could write a song that would fit on that show you know yeah and so i that's the thing Wes and I sat down and started writing Tombstone, and so when I tell people that now they go, "Oh, yeah, you're right. That, that could that, that could totally fit on that <laughs> yeah. show." So uh, that kind of challenge to me is fun too. But that's a, that's the evolution. I'm like, that wasn't the sound on the first record, but it's what I'm into now. You know, so it's like, wh why not? Yeah. You know, there's there for me there's there's no rules. I'm like, country radio is is is. Your pop and it's hip hop now is everything. I'm not one of these people that uh, looks down on that. I'm like everybody does what they do, and if, yeah. you, if you do it well, great. Um, but yeah, this this sound is uh, turned out to be pretty unique, and I'm like, I think people are uh, uh, into it, you know. So you got any? What's your newest stuff that, that people can be looking out for? Like, what is some of the newest stuff, some material that you got coming that you had? So we got you were. We're going back in the studio pretty soon, yeah, because we've got even even a song like Straight Shooter we played earlier. Uh, that's not released yet. Mm. Yeah, we've done it live a couple of times, um, but it, it's that's that's an unreleased unreleased song. And there's we got several that are in the works. What about that Tomb song? Tombstone is that's on is out. Second. Yeah, it's it's on uh, the EP. You got my something that came out in February, and. Um, that EP got nominated, the whole EP got nominated for uh, one of the Josie Music Awards that we're going to Nashville for. Yeah. Um, so the, the response has been pretty cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, I think too, man, I've known people that just have like one song that just, all it takes is just one song for live to be completely changed. Like that, yeah. like boom. Yeah. I mean, we go from just like scraping the bottom of the barrel and then having to turn the barrel sideways and shake it <laughs> and you're drowning in it and then all of a sudden boom and it's just a lot of time from one one song man and i tell you y'all y'all got the potential i feel like the potential the the drive the quality man to really just as good as anybody else out there not better that's exactly what i said in the beginning i was like i don't want to put out music that is not going to be 100 percent professional yeah. now every song may not be like country radio made you know, and there's a lot of, obviously a lot of country artists, mm -hmm. a lot of country rock artists that are not, that's okay. But I'm like, when people look at it, they're gonna have to say, well, that's that's quality, Yeah. you know? And so the, the fact that even this latest record has had so many nominations already is like, yeah. uh, you know, even if we don't win any, I'm like, that shows me that people are looking at it going, okay, these guys are doing something. Right, there's know? something there, yeah. something unique, something different. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, something special there, man. I feel that, and it's just a bit of just keep to because people like they'll give up and be like maybe just one piece away from making it, you know, just right, and they just and they just get right, right there. Yeah, 
close. And um, <laughs> yeah, I'm excited about I'm excited about y'all, man. I appreciate y'all coming down and. Uh, we appreciate you, know, you having us. Right yeah, man. Love it out here. Yeah, man. We've been doing a lot. Here, my thing is too. We've been doing a lot of meditation. It's just kind of turned into like a meditation place, man. We just we're quiet. It's a lot of a lot of times just we're quiet and just kind of going within yourself. And um, it's one of my newfound loves here lately. It's just found you know that inner peace where there's so much chaos going on, especially if you're involved in it. And it's just like it just drives you crazy, and it's just never enough, and it's always something. But just the fact that just letting things go and just backing up to that space of nothing just really just letting your thoughts just kind of go right there's so much healing in that man and, and i feel like i i don't know for the longest time i didn't have a lot to sing about but now it's you know, like through that i got a lot more to sing about now and just filled up with different you know different songs and that kind of stuff and it's just having inspiration to sing i guess what i'm saying is just finding something where you can be inspired to sing about exactly a lot of times people force are just are forcing it and it sounds forced you know yeah. but when the stuff comes up organically and naturally like it's supposed to you got something really to work yeah. with well i'll tell you a funny story on the last ep so the five songs on it four of those were either written or co-written by me and the fifth one is uh, actually a cover and um, somebody came to me and they said, I heard the EP, I love it, but what's up with that one song? And I said, and I said which one? And they told me, and, I, and they go, these others sound really personal. This one sounds like you're just singing it. And I go, I didn't write it. And they go, we can tell. And I went, you know, there you go. That's why that's why I didn't want to just put out songs just to have songs. Exactly. I wanted things that were personal to me, mm -hmm. that made sense to me, but also have, you know, emotions in it that are universal that everyone can understand. Because yeah. I'm like, what's the point? If it's just for you, that's great. Uh, I'll sit at home, write songs till the day I die. You know what I mean? But if you don't put them out there, they got to mean something to somebody. Yeah. So that the, it was ironic that that, that person zeroed in on that yeah and i was like all right you got me <laughs> well how do you trust a person enough to bring them into your music like that too because that can be kind of hard too because it is kind of like you're opening up it can be then, brutal yeah so i mean especially if they kind of laugh at it be like you know not necessarily laugh but you know what i'm talking about you know maybe yeah. i've written some a stuff scoff. before and he's like like <clears throat> <laughs> and then i go back and listen to it later i'm like yeah i see you got that from but at the same time, it really did mean some stuff to you. That's why I guess it's best to like what you said earlier. How important is it to take breaks and stop yeah. and then come back? Do y'all do that? Like even with music, do y'all just, hey, let's take a couple weeks off, guys. We're going to get back together. Next Usually week. if there's not a whole lot going on and we're all feeling the stress of, you know, life and, you know, family and this, that, and the other, and, you know, kind of getting pulled and pushed. Because and, it is a lot. It's a lot yeah, to keep up with. And, and, Especially when you have kids and shit. And you're yeah. just like, fuck, well, I don't have any time to, like, poop in my own house. Like, yeah. I have to poop in 7-Eleven on my drive. <laughs> so, yeah, now there are times where, you know, either I'll call it or Bink will call it. Somebody will, you know, text and be like, hey, I can't make it this week. And the rest of us like, thank God, like me either, dude. And we'll take a week off. Come back the next week, nice and fresh. Everybody's in, you know, the right headspace. All right, we'll, we'll alternate it. sometimes between just straight up practice for the live shows or doing some songwriting, yeah. doing some recording. So we're trying to mix it up so it's not just the same practice every single week, which I think is important because it's like, you know, playing the same ten songs over and over. Yeah, you're, you're gonna get, even though I love the songs, you know what I mean. You want to uh, keep moving forward and writing new stuff, also. So we try to balance that as well. Yeah. Do y'all ever record y'all sessions, or y'all just go to the studio to do that? Like, and y'all when y'all, you know, no, all the yeah, all the recording stuff is in the space where we practice. Okay. Yeah, so we, yeah. we own the studio. Okay. Yeah. So we'll definitely not every session, but some of them. Yeah, we do record just so we can, you know, hear what we're doing. I mean, half the time it's just so we can remember what we played, especially yeah. if, it's like, if it's a new song, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, that sounds cool. Hit the record button yeah. because we're, we're not going to remember this next week. Yeah. We're not going to remember that hook or that yeah. yeah. You got to record it right there. It's gone if you yeah. don't. It's like, yep. oh, float away. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? I don't know what I played. Nope. I've learned that lesson yep. too many times with songwriting where I'm like, oh, 
I'll remember that tune later. That's catchy can't, enough. Can't remember it. Yeah, there's can't no remember. way I forget that. <laughs> you find yourself on the neck going, Oh, no, no, uh, no. <laughs> You're like, I don't know. You send me notes. <laughs> I probably started writing a hundred songs while I'm driving and going voice memo. Oh my God. And hum just humming into yeah. it. Okay, all right, good. And then I'll come back to it later because I'm like, I'm not gonna remember this tune of these words later. Yeah. But yeah, I've got a, literally a list is like a hundred long just of song ideas that have, that's the, the genesis of them. Yeah, man. Yeah. Do y'all have any weird kind of things that y'all do as far as like, you know, before you go to practice or maybe some superstitions or like different <laughs> drumsticks or maybe the same pair? I got like this little rod that I carry around in my pocket for good luck. You know, you know so. um, one of my <laughs> biggest superstitious things is don't practice right before a show. I, I don't, I won't do it. Uh, like two, three days prior, if we have a show on a Saturday and they want to get together on a Tuesday, that's a stretch. I'm probably not going to make it. Yeah. Because that's like bad juju for me. No, let me go in dry. Mm -hmm. I promise you it'll turn out good. You guys get together and do what you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you at the show. Yeah. It's almost kind of like you start thinking it too much. And that's yeah. when you start messing You overthink it and, you, and then you get like stressed. And also, I've figured out through my years that if you have a really good rehearsal right before a show, that show's done. Yeah. You're going to mess that show up. <laughs> if you have a really crappy rehearsal right before a show, that's the show you want to record because that's gonna be a great show oh man and I've, I've seen it happen so many times where i'm like god that was such a good rehearsal when we get to the show and we play and i'm just like oh my god like, like this crowd should have been at rehearsal this show sucks well the, so the first full live show that we played together you know i was not um, a live player before hmm. and they said well you're gonna play live now yeah, yeah. And i said you sure uh so the fact that they had the confidence that I could do it, I said, I, I don't, you guys wouldn't say that if you didn't think I could do it. You know, they'd yeah. be like, no. <laughs> right, so we, we played that, that show and it's funny because a few days before my wife goes, are you gonna practice tonight for the, you know, even at home? And I said, well, I'm not gonna get better in two days. <laughs> so no, <laughs> like I'm gonna let it sit. Yeah. And then that show actually turned out like better than I imagined. I, I watched the video later and I went, oh, okay. Huh. That was pretty darn good. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we are our own worst enemy. Oh, like yeah. Any, any artist. Because you, you do it and you're like, wow, this, that, that, this, that, that. And that's not the case. Wait a week, two weeks, go back, watch it, listen to it. And you're like, okay. And then there's only like three marks that you're like, I need to polish that, I need to do yeah. this, I need to do that. You can never do something and then right away go back and listen to it and expect an honest self-opinion of it. Yeah. Because you're going to shit all over. Yeah. So. You yeah. feel that too. That's my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool, man. Well, y'all got anything else I want to talk about, man? No, that's it. We're uh, we are on our... Where y'all headed right now? What, what's next? Yeah, we're going we're going up to Nashville this weekend. Nashville, okay. So we were uh, glad that we were able to stop here. Yeah. The way. Yeah, yeah cool. the, the Josie Music Awards are on Sunday. Nominated for four awards. <clears throat> yeah, I still can't believe it. Bro, yeah. good luck, uh, man. Oh, my God. I mean, I got nominated for Country Artist of the Year. Which songs was the ones that kind of... So... From the from the last EP, the whole EP got a, a, a nomination. The song "You Got My Something" mm -hmm. got a nomination for um, Southern Rock. Um, the ballad Loretta That's good got song. nominated for Country Song of the Year, and then, like I said, I literally got nominated in the Country Artist of the Year category, which I go, "That's insane." Yeah. Um, I don't expect to win that, but the fact that my name's on the list right. is just like, okay, well, at least, you know what I mean? Yeah. When you see somebody's paying attention and into what you're doing, you know, yeah. it's, a, it's a good feeling. And you so. look on there and you see your name on there and you're like, huh, yeah. I didn't put that on there. <laughs> All right. Exactly. I didn't nominate you. I didn't nominate myself. <laughs> Somebody saw me and liked it. That's a good, even even that right there, man, is yeah, a compliment. That's payment. Man. Bro, that's, that is a payment. Yeah. That's a big payment. No, because you can't put amazing. a value on that, man. Mm -hmm. You can't put a dollar sign on that. I feel like when you put start putting money on this stuff with music, you get crazy stuff happening, man. Yeah. Just like you read on the papers and all this stuff. All these artists doing all these crazy stuff. When you start 
for money. They're doing it for money, not the love for music. Yep. You know. Well, even last year, I had I had submitted the song uh, "Country by Birthright" to the Josies and got nominated for Song of the Year, and uh, which I thought was nuts, even then. And um, you know, I went, and the awards are at the Grand Ole Opry House, which um, you know, it's a that's a dream of mine to play there. Like like any country day, artist, you know what I mean? Day, yeah. yeah. And I remember my wife saying, "Well, what what, what do you do you think you'll play the Grand Ole Opry?" Yeah. And I go, "Oh, well, we're working on that." Oh yeah. And so when I won that award, I got to stand in the circle to accept that award, and I go, "There you go, one step closer." Man. So just just being there that first time and and being in that venue and for especially for something musical that I put out. You know, was just like, I mean, there was a lot of magic in that. This year, with all four of them, uh, I'm like, I hope we win one just so these musical brothers of mine can go up there and share in yeah. it. You know what I mean? I'm like, that would be, to me, the icing on the cake. Yeah. So we're excited either way, but uh, I mean, we're going to have fun. Yeah, man. We're going to dress up full country rock star and we're going to we're gonna have a good time. Even if we don't win one. We, uh, you we're know, good time. we are already <laughs> winners. Yeah, I, like I said, being nominated for four at it. At it. Yeah, they said that this year, this is the tenth anniversary of that show, and they said they had over seventy thousand submissions. God if, my. if you got nominated, you're already in less than two percent. Yep. You know, the top two percent of people who submitted songs. So I feel like, you know, the recognition factor is already there. Exactly. Yeah. So that's like I said, four nominations, I was just like, what? Yeah. This is crazy. So, but we're, we're, we're psyched. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, I wish y'all the best of luck, man. Thank you, thank you, sir. Hollis, Josh, man. Thank y'all for coming down and hanging out with me, man. And Hell yeah. Even, even for something that sounds as hokey as a Christmas song, I'm like, no, I, I got something to say. So I'm like, slowly collecting those songs yeah. i feel like when i got enough of them we're gonna maybe do a whole album yeah, 2027 man. coming yeah. out with a christmas i'm album. telling you i want to hear i want to hear some christmas songs man i like christmas music. i'm telling you I like i said right, you're hard rock guys so when i say christmas song the look on his face is like why don't you just shoot me now <laughs> but i'm telling you i that song one, the one in particular is, is really good and then same thing like different genres like like i was saying the I try to challenge myself and go, could I write a song like? And I wrote I wrote one. It's not done yet, but it's like a piece of it. <clears throat> and my wife comes in, and I, I basically said, like, hey, hey I'm, I'm going to play you this. Uh, it's an old Elvis uh, Christmas song. And I play a little piece of it for her. And she's like, yeah. So I go, what do you think? And she goes, oh, I don't know. I've never heard the original. And I go, actually, you have, because that was it. I go, that was an Elvis song I wrote. I said, I just wanted to see if you right. would, if I told you it was an old Elvis song from like 1963, yeah. would you believe it? And yeah. she was like, yeah, it sounds like it could have been nice. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so little things like that where I'm like, try to challenge myself, yeah. you know, in different genres. But yeah, but now even that, I'm like, why not? You know, if it's fun. It's always good to go different genres, just to keep your chops up, keep your 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 your, your ability sharp. Yeah, going to different genres because you're not used to yeah. playing whatever. Yeah, it's for I mean for any musician, it's important. Yeah, don't just stick to the one genre. You could play the one genre, but definitely dabble in those other genres because you never know what that genre has that you could use in your current. Yeah, that's that's exactly true. Yeah, because is all the whole band is just whole band. Is it basically? Is it what are the kind of flares is it in there? Like the bass player, what, what's? God, Stone, he's played a lot, like from like thrash to punk to you know hardcore to regular like rock and roll, radio rock. Yeah, like he's played a lot. I know Bink, he's just. He, it's retarded how good he is on yeah. the guitar. Like it, he he blows me away each and every time he plays. Just him sitting down to, and him plucking around. You're just like, God damn, that's not like yeah. on its own. You could have an untuned guitar yeah. play something, and it would sound good. Yeah. It's ridiculous. 
I always say like I playing live like um, uh, I make the joke I go I just do this so I have the best seat in the house to listen to him play guitar <laughs> but it's <laughs> really no joke like <laughs> it's, it's beautiful yeah he's just he's just that kind of guy that yeah. just has yeah. it in him you know I've caught myself a couple times losing my my spot like, I, I can't remember where the hell I was because I was watching him yeah. play, and I'm like, oh, God. Where am I? Uh, oh, where am I? Yeah. Like, am I on two? Where's yeah. the one? I know. I just Damn. missed that one. But yeah. that's what I mean. I, when I started this, I was like, you know, there's there's so many things that I cannot do that um, other people can do a thousand times better than me. And when I hear somebody like Bing play, I'm like, oh, and there it is. Like, that's, that, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's like, where it's at. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. And it's... Just like, like I said, they'll add something to a song that I would, I couldn't think of on my own. Man, you know, and you just go, well, it sounds like it's been there all along. Even a song I wrote five years ago, and suddenly they'll add something to it, and I'll go, damn it, it's like it was just <laughs> white in there. Yeah, you know, and now now you you can't hear the song without it. Anymore. Yeah, talking, it's, right? it's almost kind of like. That first initial talk, man, it's is hard because, you know, was oh, once you kind of get loosened yeah. up, man, yeah. it's just like the conversation just flows. And this one, like a lot of times what happens with me, if those are the times I don't, if not, I'm not recording. It's the best yeah. ones, you know, right. it's the ones when you press record, everything just kind of, oh my God, then when we don't record, oh my God, I wish we were recording. That's the good stuff. Well, when you, you can't like, plan it, you know, this has yeah. to come organically. You it know? has to be organic. And if you, like, if you listen to podcasts, like the, I mean, the best ones are literally just like they're lost in conversation. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you could tell. Yeah. You can tell the difference between an interview and just a, a, a conversation. conversation. A real conversation, yeah. The thing that I find interesting is like, it's like I love making the music, but it didn't occur to me that people would be interested in the stories behind it. You know what I mean? And, peop and people will ask me all the time, how did you write that? Yeah. Why did you write You know what I mean? And I'm going, oh. Yeah. I go, well, that, that's part of it. And there's a story for every one of these songs. So I'm like, yeah. okay, sit down, boys and girls. I'm going to tell you the story. <laughs> Right. You got a minute? Yeah. Right. Well, that, got the that, drinks. That's how I built a brand. That's what we did with the drones. Yeah. Is having the story attached to the wood that where we get them from. You yeah. know, that you know that's the whole, the whole thing, you know. Yeah. From all the old wood and just yeah, bring build it's all about the story. All about the story. I, I, there's I, no story it doesn't it doesn't to me it's just it's bland, you know. And I'll tell you what I appreciate now. I told you earlier, like my mom has been gone a long time, but she would she would love this whole place. But I grew up in a house that my dad built from remnants of a, at that time was a hundred year old plus house that they tore down over on, um, in West Orlando. And my mom saw them tearing this house down. <clears throat> this is like 1979, 1980. Saw them tearing this house down. Goes in and asks them if she can have the lumber. They were literally just gonna take it away. And we're talking about lumber and again, a hundred year old plus house even at that time. She took the lumber, the beams, the doors, all of the skeleton key locks and stuff that were on that. And my dad built our house from that stuff, mm. almost single-handedly. I remember a couple of weekends he had help, but he, he basically spent a year building that house. Yeah. So while it was a new house, it was like a hundred year old house to yeah. us. So that whole idea of like reclaiming things, you know, and uh, there's nothing that my mom loved more than an old, um, you know, those old, uh, uh, the metal cans that milk used to come in. Those crates? No, they were, the, the yeah, they were like cans. We had crates yeah. too, but they were cans. Okay. She had them all over her yard and different rusted, you know, but she, it, for her, that was art. They were beautiful, mm -hmm. you know, so that's why I said, that's why I've got a, emotional connection to what you got going you on you should here. walk around like you should just walk that way you, yeah i mean this is some but there's a lot more that way really yeah yeah but yeah that that said that it yeah it makes it makes me think of her being here which is cool well she is here man you know that's why i love the whole fact about you know when people pass like that you know i used to think that you know my dad was gone somewhere on another planet somewhere and now that i've kind of matured in that I, I realize that he is here. He's yep. here. And there's times where, you know, and I feel like we're just like a little station. You know, we got to, sometimes we got to tune that radio station to be able to pick up on those frequencies yeah. where we can pick them up. And not to say I can, like, talk to them and all that, but you can just feel them. You know, you I feel always them. got mine right here. 
Yeah. I got my mom and my dad. Right got there. Got their ashes in there. I swear to God. They always hang out with me.